bottom of the stairs, open the track box and take out the track, brackets, and small parts package. You should find track brackets, bracket bolts, wood screws, and the call control cord with a connector bracket. Lay the track on the stairs with the metal end plate at the bottom. Set something under the bottom end of the rail to raise it one half to three quarters inch from the lower landing. This prevents the track from hitting the floor when the brackets are tightened. Fasten brackets to the track channel on the bottom step and hand tighten. The bottom bracket gets installed inside the bottom nut. Leave the second to the bottom nut unused. It'll be used later. It's easier to do this with the track setting out from the wall. It's easy to slide it up against the wall later. Splice bars are used to join the track sections. Loosen the set screws and pull the splice bar out halfway. Tighten to hold in place. Slide the other section of track onto the exposed splice bar and tighten the set screws. Note the track will not slide onto the splice bars if the set screws are protruding. Be careful not to put your fingers between the two sections of track at any time or injury could occur. Now attach track brackets, one pair above and one pair below where the track splices. Do not remove the foam packing beside the embedded nuts. Now you're ready to slide the track up against the wall or molding. The brackets are designed to position the unit the required two inches from the wall. Please note, if there is an obstruction such as a window sill or handrail, the track needs to be positioned two inches out from the obstruction. If your lift was ordered with the optional wide seat, the track needs to be positioned three and one-half inches from the wall or obstruction. <music>